All right, guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. So uh, this video today is about how to integrate your Firepower Management Center, FMC, into Active Directory using LDAP. Now, the FMC has multiple ways you can integrate for user identities, and in this case, it's Active Directory. This is your typical management scenario where you already have all this infrastructure stood up. You have roles and permissions and groups, and you just want to leverage that to allow people to log in and view certain things within Firepower. So we'll get to that configuration here in a minute. Just don't forget about in the description, there are bookmarks to help you jump around. There's also links to any resources if they were used in this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you find this content useful. Thanks. We'll get to it here in a minute. All right, so the requirements for this video are pretty simple today, uh, relative compared to other videos I've made. Uh, you'll need a web browser so you can log into your device, your FMC in this case, and manipulate the configuration. You'll need an FMC that's installed. It doesn't really matter which version. I'm using 6.5 in this video. Uh, whichever one you use, it should not matter. Integration has been relatively stable across all of the versions. Uh, you'll need an Active Directory server and a way to reach it. So it doesn't matter if you RDP into it or console or remote terminal into it. I'm using VMware, so I like using VMware's uh, web console. It just works great. That's what you'll need for this video. We'll see you guys in a few. All right, guys, welcome back to Cisco Nate. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, everything I normally do. I'm going to start off with uh, logging into the resources that I need first. There's no software to download this time, so this should be a little easier than normal. We'll go ahead and log in here. And while I log in to vSphere for my Active Directory server and the FMC, we'll just talk about some of the nuances or gotchas here to fill up the time. So the reason I wanted to publish this video was integrating with Active Directory seems like a relatively easy task, and indeed, in general, it is. However, there is one real big gotcha for engineers who have to kind of test and integrate all of these things and don't necessarily deal with every single component uh, every day. And that is on Firepower to in integrate to Active Directory for user authentication for the screen I just showed you. I just logged in using an Active Directory user. Uh, you have to very specifically integrate using the user name, not the user ID. And I'll get more specifically into what that is in a minute here, and you'll see it all click and make sense. But it will hang you up most likely if it's your first time doing this. So you can see here that Cisco Nate exists. That's the username I just logged in with using an external authentication mechanism. And that was the LDAP Active Directory integration with my Active Directory server. Now, these usernames do not have to be created here or pre-placed here for this to work. If I create a new user in Active Directory with the right permissions and then log in, it will appear here. It is seeded once you use the username and it queries and pulls back the information from Active Directory. All right, so on to the how do I get my FMC integrated. You go under System, Users, External Authentication. Now, I already have one created here, and I'm going to use that as a template just to kind of speed up uh, how uh, fast it takes me to do this, how, how long it takes me to do this. So I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to duplicate it in another tab here. Should have just clicked Duplicate tab. Duh. And I'm going to open this one as kind of a base template so I can cut and paste some of the longer parts of this configuration. Then I'm going to come over here to my vSphere and log into my Active Directory server using the remote console or the web console from VMware. Now, it's my preferred way. Whatever infrastructure you have running, your ID is how you do it. You can RDP in, you can console in, doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you from the ground up how you do this. I'm closing everything out just to do it again. But if you run Server Manager and you're running a typical, this is a Windows 2016 server, then I should be able to, from Server Manager, to go to Tools. Active Directory, Users, and Computers. <clears throat> now, this is where it kind of gets hairy. Um, Active Directory is structured in what's called domains and then OU objects and other things. And they have a special naming scheme and hierarchy. And I don't know all the specifics to it, but I will tell you what you do need to know. And that is you need to know your domain. And this is important because it helps limit how much of the Active Directory tree, FMC, or anything else has to query or search through to find your users, find the groups, and find the proper membership. Typically, best practice for uh, servers or services is to create what's called a managed service account under a folder called managed service accounts. And that's because these service accounts typically either have more strict or more relaxed requirements on them depending on the organization you're in. You have to change the passwords every 30 days or every 60 days, whatever it is, versus a normal user who typically has a every six month password change policy. They may also have a, a policy where their passwords 
don't change or they're fixed or you want to disable the change at first logon. All of these things matter. The real gotcha though is when it comes to actually creating your service account. So I'm going to create a new service account under here. I'm going to right click on manage service accounts, click new and click user. Yes, it is a new user that goes under the managed service accounts for your service accounts, i.e. FMC or ISC or whatever else you have running. So I'm going to call this Firepower Management. Whoop, and we're going to take that out of there and put it in the correct box here, Management. And I'm going to call this FMC-A3. All right, and the reason I'm doing this is because in my naming scheme, I, I labeled my devices FMC-A, in this case for the FMC. I have multiple, so there's a B, there's a C. It doesn't really matter, but what's relevant here is because this is for the primary FMC, it's my third username I'm creating, that's why I'm naming it this. Now, this username is what you would intuitively think you use to integrate with Active Directory. Hey, I, I need a username to log into Active Directory or authenticate myself. And that is not the case. That is what will stump you guys here if you're the first time you're an engineer trying to do this integration. What you need is the username that shows up on the next screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this real quick, the password. This will be whatever you want for your typical service account. What you need is the full name, this name that shows up here, not the user ID. Now, when it comes to actually logging in to the Firepower, you'll use the user ID or the username. But for now, you need this name here. All right, so let's get back to the FMC and start building this new external authentication. I'm gonna hit Add External Authentication Object. And we're gonna be stealing a lot of configuration from my old one just to make it easy. This is LDAP, you can also do RADIUS. I will publish a video on how to integrate with RADIUS, in this case, ISE, later on. And later on down here, I'm just showing you the simplest way to integrate. This is no SSL or TLS authentication with certificates. This is just basic Active Directory integration. So I'm gonna call this Cisco Nate AD. And then we're gonna go to ad.ciscoNate.local. And then we're gonna go fill in our base filter. So the, or the base DN, sorry, not the filter. The base DN is essentially your domain. Now you could set it for the whole tree, but in my case, I am going to make it specific to my domain. So that's DC equals Cisco Nate, DC equals local. You might wonder how you build this. Well, when you look at your tree here, the domain, each component, everything on other sides of periods is in this case for domain, it's DC. Now, if you get further down the manage tree object here, you'll see that in this case, later on, we'll be referencing the managed service account and that falls under CN. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the specifics of the hierarchy here. I'm just going to tell you how it is and how you can configure itself. If it's a folder under the domain, it's CN. And if it's a user, it's CN. If it's a domain, it's DC. So you can see I've built this tree kind of backwards here. I stole this for my username. And in this case, my username, not my username, my uh, user ID is Firepower management. I have to put it within quotes because there's a space. That space was induced just by the name that I typed there. So that's another gotcha. If you have spaces, put it within the quotes. So firepower management as the user name, as the name shows, not the username, right here. Firepower management. <coughs> now, my firepower management is not a member of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and add him to my Firepower Administrators group. You need to make sure he's in the proper group, so Firepower Administrators is tied to my Firepower Admins. And then I'm gonna type in the password here. Now the UI access attribute, this is the attribute that it used to figure out uh, what the usernames are. And in this case, in 99% of your cases, it's going to be the SAM account name. This is the user ID that shows up. under the account tab here. This is what people actually use to log in. This is known as the SAM account name under the attribute. So that's what you wanna look for when you're trying to map permissions. Now I'm gonna do group controlled access uh, for people that I want to have administrator access on this device. I'm going to look up their SAM account name and I'm gonna make sure they're part of the Firepower administrators, which, which is why I put that administrator group membership on that user ID. So Firepower administrators. 
Then the group member attribute tells you, well, I'm looking for a firepower administrators and I needed to be a member. So that's what I've done here. You can see member on my old template. I'm gonna make my shell uh, access filter the same. So shell access is when you CLI into FTD versus the FMC and uh, in, into the FMC itself as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and test this and make sure everything we configured works. Now, if you test and it works, it will give you a nice green blocks up the top. It'll say success. It'll say, I found all these users. Uh, the other thing you can do is in addition to just testing basic functionality, you can add a username specifically to look up in here. So I'm gonna search for my other name, nstep with its password, and it's going to simulate a login or a qu somebody logged in with nstep and now the FMC is checking Active Directory to validate it. So now you should see, there you go, true membership for nstep was administrator. So it successfully validated a lookup as well as integrating. So I can hit save at this point, I know this worked. And now, name is in, oh, because I, eh, okay, Cisco and AD, sorry. I can save this <coughs> now that I properly named configuration. And we can actually switch over to using this new user account, uh, this new LDAP integration. So I'm going to disable the old one and enable the new one, and I'm gonna hit save and apply. Now this is just to show you that the integration did indeed successfully work. <laughs> I'm using a new username to integrate with LDAP. And what I should be able to do is, to verify everything worked properly, I should be able to show you that the only users that exist currently are admin and Cisco Nate. I should be able to log out, and then log back in using a new username that does not exist in the current users. And what you'll see is on the back end, it's going to reach into Active Directory, validate I have the ability to log in as an administrator, and then it's going to add my user ID locally to the system and tell you that it's performing external authentication for me. So let's go back to the user's pane. And there I am, NSTAP, external, everything has worked properly. This is exactly as you want it. So this is great. Uh, I look forward to showing you guys another video. We're going to publish another one later that shows you how to secure this using SSL or TLS and certificates. And uh, I'll probably also be publishing video on how to integrate with Radius instead. And another video that goes into more detail about shell access and filtering commands that people are able to execute on your devices. All right, I hope this was useful for you guys. Have a good one.